Hello, hello. In this video, we are going to talk about background images. Background images are an important, more advanced technique in CSS because they allow you to have more complex layouts. A lot of things that you might want to see on your pages, such as designs and other accents, can actually be background images. And this is going to be a very uh, brief introduction to them. Uh, you are going to need to have open uh, for this tutorial uh, the course website, uh, your own page. Um, there is a Word tutorial that I will provide for you that we're going to be using. You will obviously need to have your uh, FTP as well up and running. There are two kinds of background images that we are going to be covering in this video. The first is adding a single background image, and the second one is going to be adding a background pattern, which is essentially an image that is repeated throughout that you can appear. Um, so uh, it's pretty simple to do this. Uh, first, you have to decide which image you want to use for your background. Um, I have an image that I want to use on my background. It looks like this. It's this half flower. Oh, I'm trying to resize it. There we go. Uh, this half image, I'm going to position it onto the left side of my screen uh, so that it, it stays there. And this is something that one of my sons made that I am, uh, that I am using. Okay. Um, and I already have it in my images folder in my web design folder. All right, so that's the first step. Decide which image you would like to have for your background image. Put the image in your images folder in your web design folder and then upload it to the server. All right, I will go ahead and do that. Move that over there. Bring that up. Images and I'm going to upload to my images folder over here. All right. And you can see that half flower is in my images folder. Great. Now I'm going to go back to the tutorial. It's going to say go to main CSS and add the below code to your already existing HTML selector in the main section of main CSS. So I'm going to copy all of this right here. And it's got little notes and I'll explain those to you when we uh, get to brackets, which you also need to have open. And I'm going to paste this in just like that. And I will clean this up a little bit. Okay, so the background image. This is the uh, code that we use when we want to style uh, our background image. We have a URL path. And I'm going to be explaining what this dot dot slash is in another video. Um, but you do need it in here. This dot dot slash images, which is your images folder and your image file name. So I'm going to replace this with a half flower. Um, and now it will point to that half flower image. The background position uh, is the location on the screen that we want to have the image appear, or specifically in whatever um, selector you are using. So with the HTML one, it's pretty much going to be uh, where on the screen overall that we want it. Um, this top left places that image in the top left hand corner of the screen. Okay. Background repeat, and I say no repeat. That is because I do not want the image to tile. I don't want it repeated across the screen. I just want that single one. Uh, so that is uh, set to no repeat. Background size, this scales down or scales up the image uh, to fit in the space that you want. And I'll show you what that looks like if I don't have this uh, for the image that I'm going to be using. And background attachment fixed makes the image stay still even if there is scrolling on the page. So you can have things scrolling up uh, above it. Okay. And you'll notice that I've just copied and pasted this all directly in from uh, the tutorial. Uh, you can change any of these to repeat if you want things repeated. If you want things top right, you can change it to top right or center right. Uh, I should say again, Ducket is very good on a lot of these properties uh, in here. So uh, go take a look at the book and he's very good at explaining all of this. 
Okay, so I'm going to save this now. And then I'm going to go to my Mozilla Refresh Styles Main Upload. Go back to my screen. And now what I expect to see is that little half flower to appear right over here. And there it is. And I can scroll and it appears. Now you might have something that looks uh, considerably nicer. Uh, obviously this is something I just grabbed from my, my son. Very well colored, but it doesn't really go with the aesthetic of the page. I imagine you have things that will. Now what I want to also notice is that what's happening right here as my screen gets smaller is that I have a background color set for the body of white. And if I want this background image to appear through that background color, I need to go back to uh, my code and I need to change this to transparent. And that will indicate that anything will shine through it. And then I want to just make sure that on my other screen sizes that I have not set a background color for the body. And I see that I have not anywhere else. So let's see what happens. I'm going to save. We upload. Refresh. And we can see that that shines through there. Now that is not a particularly good look uh, because it is hard to read uh, what is going on. But if you have a more subtle background, like the one in the book is a very, uh, uh, there's a lot of opacity to it, and you can actually read through it, then that's perfectly fine. And you can see this will now be on all the screen sizes because I've coded it into the main section. Okay? But the tutorial indicates that you should code it into the main section. However, if I only want it to appear on the computer screen and not the uh, phone or other screens, I would cut this all out of the main area. Okay. Put my curly brace back in. And I would go down to my computer screen, or if I want it in the tablet, let's say I want it on the tablet or the computer, I would do HTML, paste, oops, I've got an extra curly brace there. Back that up. Save. Refresh. I see it on the computer screen. I can go to my responsive design mode. I do not see it on the phone screen now, as you can see. I do, however, see it on the tablet. Okay. So I'm now controlling which images are appearing on what uh, on what screen size. Um, no. Now I don't particularly like it on the tablet either. It tends to get in the way um, because of this image. So I would go back and actually remove it from uh, from the tablet and just go back and place it in the computer screen. I'll refresh it again. Go back. And now it should not show up on any of the other screen sizes, and it does not. So this is just allowing me to have a little bit of extra decoration uh, on my page. Uh, just it's just uh, something else to see. It's, not, it's nice. It looks pretty good over there. Like I said, when it gets to be a little bit smaller, it does not look so great. So uh, this is something that you can choose to do uh, if you uh, would like. Uh, one thing I did say that I was going to uh, show you was what will happen if I change this background size uh, so there is no scaling. I'm just going to remove that for a second. Just 
take out that line, save it, refresh. And I'll refresh this here. And you can see now this is the, the full size of the image uh, right now. And that is quite, quite large. Um, so what we would want, to, the background scaling, what that allows, it actually doesn't look too terrible, that's so big, a little bit better than before. Um, what the scaling does is it allows you to take an image that is larger and uh, just scale it down to whatever size that you want it to be. And it should work with pixels, percentages, EMs, anything like that. I've used, uh, I've used this here. Uh, this 200 pixels is for the width. And then the white just and then the height just automatically adjusts to keep the same aspect ratio. So I'm going to re-upload this now. Put that in there. Push. There it is. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to press pause for a second. I'm going to delete the code that I currently have, and then we're going to work on uh, getting a background pattern. Hold on a second. Let's get this background pattern in there. You can see I've refreshed my page. I've got no background image here. So we're going to get a background pattern. Uh, there is on the tutorial, if you scroll down from the top, you will see adding a background image pattern. We are going to be using a site called Subtle Patterns, which is just a, a really nice site that somebody put together uh, that has all these different background patterns that we're allowed to use. Uh, there is a link to this subtle patterns on the course website under design spaces. You will see simple patterns. And it should be subtle patterns. I will change that. Um, I've had that on there for years, never noticed it. So we can, you'll see that there are how many pages? 40 plus pages of patterns that we can use. Um, we just download onto our site and give see how it see how it all looks. So I'm going to grab one that is pretty obvious to see. Um, that way you can see it easily and it won't be too much trouble. Now what's nice is that you can preview it. So there's this blue floral type thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this image. Downloading it should be completely safe. Uh, you will notice on the tutorial it says do not use Safari for this step. I'm going to bold it so it's even bolder. Uh, Safari is a disaster with zipped images and uh, so please do not use Safari. Make sure, you, like with everything else with the class, use Firefox Developer Edition. So uh, if you're using Firefox Developer Edition you should get this, um, this window asking you how you want to do it. Open it this way. You don't have to save it. You can just sort of open and it will take a few seconds for it to do what it needs to do. You'll get a little pop-up like this, uh, this folder here, bush, and you'll see this bush.jpg. And what this is, is essentially, is it's a square. It's just one square that someone has created that when tiled, all the patterns in it interlock perfectly. And that's what creates a background pattern for the page. So I'm going to drag this image into my own images folder so that it lives in there. Now it's there with my half flower. Very nice. Close this down, move this out of the way, and I can go back to my tutorial. Okay. So once I've chosen a pattern, click download, open the zip folder to reveal a file, Put it in my images folder. Okay. Um, upload the image to my images folder on the server. So let's go ahead and do that. Images. Oh, there it is. Very exciting. Uh, put it, pop it in my images folder. See if it's there. There it is. Push.png. Very nice. Do, 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 do. Go back up here to my styles. I'll be doing that in a second. And then uh, we just copy this code right here into my um, HTML selector. Now, one thing I want to notice is that let me change this to single. 
just for consistency's sake. It doesn't matter if it's single or double, but I have it single above. Um, but this is coded slightly different. This one says background image, um, and this one has just background. And that's because I'm including the repeating and the positioning uh, on the same line. And this is just a shortcut so that you don't have to have all that additional coding. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to brackets. I get, now I'm in my computer, my main section again. Paste it in. And I'm going to replace this. Bush.jpg should be right there. I want it to repeat top left, okay? Starting in the top left, which will put it in the top left corner of the screen, and I want it to repeat. And that means just repeat it throughout the entire page, okay? And I can go back to my FileZilla. I've already uploaded my image. You notice we're not doing anything with the HTML right now. This is all in the CSS. Now, this is going to look particularly uh, not wonderful. Um, I don't think because of the colors and everything, but we're going to be able to see it and press refresh and there it is. And I've got this background pattern now on my page. If I want to see what it would look like without, with a white background, the white body, remember I made that transparent before, I could add the color back in and see how it looks. There it is. Okay. Uh, and that's how we have a little background pattern. Now, there are ways to have it repeat across just the top or just down the bottom. So I can change this to repeat X, and we will see what happens. And I've just got repeating it across the top, because this is my x-axis. Remember from math, x and y. It always freaks me out to have to remember these things too, so if you're feeling that way, uh, that's the reason. Now, because I don't have this set to position fixed, it will scroll with the page. But if you wanted a little background pattern at the top like that, you could. I could position it towards the bottom, um, and so on. Uh, I could also do repeat y. See, uh, top right, change this around a little bit. Now I have it just going down the side on the right. So you have that flexibility and Duck It Helps is really very good on this. Um, I tend to prefer it to be repeating and starting everything on the top left, so I'm going to change that back. Oops. And there it is. All right. So not too difficult. All the lines of code that you need are right in there. You can just uh, adjust them as always. Um, there is actually on the bottom of this uh, tutorial a little bit on footers, which if you want to add a footer to your page, you're going to be required to do that in the second project. Um, but it's or it's this tutorial, these tutorials were sort of put together in the past, and um, I'm giving you the background stuff a little earlier this semester. Uh, so if you want to add that to your page to the footer, uh, go right ahead. Uh, give it a try. See what you think. You do not need a background image if you don't want to. Uh, sometimes they look good. Sometimes they, they don't. But uh, give it a go, and if you have any questions, let me know. Alrighty, have a great day. Bye.